Well, March Madness may sadly be ending, and that's what a lot of the content on this channel has been revolving around lately. This is my favorite time of the year for sports. Like I said, Final Four this weekend. Uh, usually MLB opening weekend would be this weekend, but it's been this past week. Then right behind, after that, we got NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs. There's going to be all sorts of content coming on all these leagues. So if you enjoy sports, if you just enjoy sports and love talking sports, love talking ball, love listening to guys talking ball, uh, Bandwagon Sports YouTube channel, this is the place for you. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit like on the video. I'm Shoot to Rock, and I'm here today with Circling the Bases, the MLB betting predictions preview show here on the Bandwagon Sports YouTube channel. So today, I'm going to be kind of going through here my predictions for the American League for this 2024 MLB season, kind of recapping the first week, how each team's done, and then my, I have them here in tiers. I'm doing the American League today, I'm doing the National League tomorrow. So like I said, make sure you be subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications, like these videos if you're enjoying it. Let's get into it. So the first tier we have here, for the American League. We have the teams that are just tanking, the bottom feeders, the teams that unless you are a gambler, do not bother like watching these teams. Unless you're a gambler or a fan of these teams, like don't don't do not waste your time. Uh so those teams I have the Kansas City Royals, I have the Chicago White Sox and the Oakland A's. So we'll start with the A's. The A's are currently one and six. Uh they did win one game against the uh, Guardians, after getting swept by Boston uh, then this past week, uh, they already sent down their best player, Story Ruiz. That's a team, this is literally just Major League in real life, the movie. They're trying to be so bad because this is their last year in Oakland. They don't want They don't want to be good. There was literally a post going around of like a uh, handbook for employees, like take down anything like Oakland really. Like they do not want to associate with the city, which is so sad because it is really a passionate fan base, a city that loves baseball, and it's really sad to see them lose their team. But honestly, if it wasn't for how bad the A's were, people would be saying the same thing about the White Sox. The White Sox are one in six. They actually did get a win yesterday against the Braves uh, to split that series one one. The other other game today got uh, around Wednesday got rained out, and then they got swept by the Tigers the first season. Uh, the White Sox has been a fire sale. They got rid of Dylan Cease. Um, they, Tim Anderson didn't get resigned last season. Jake Berger was playing too well, so they traded him. They're back at with Yohan Moncada, who's been horrible playing third based um i mean this is a team really the only bright spot for them is luis robert i mean eloy jimenez is already injured again he was supposed to be you know this top prospect like boncada both of them have just been underperformed been injured i don't really expect much for the Sox this year i think they just like the a's very no question finished last place in their division and then the royals are another team uh nowhere near as bad as these other two i actually think they're gonna be better than last year they had a really bad year last year um, they're two and four so far in the season went one and three versus Minnesota. Uh, and then, um, one and two against Baltimore. They actually did win a game against the Orioles, but, uh, they were actually in position, you know, to kind of win the series, but then and choked it away today. So that was tough for them. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. Fun player to watch. If like uh, the Royals, I guess are kind of worth watching just for Bobby Witt Jr. Salvador Perez is still there. The one remaining player from their 2015 championship team. So they're a team that, you know, they're, they're not quite ready to take that next step, but it's going to be coming sooner rather than later as opposed to these these other two. Uh, then kind of my next set here, it's teams that are kind of going to be on the outside looking in, like maybe next year's their season, not this season. First, we'll start with the Boston Red Sox. Red Sox are actually 5-2 and two so far this year. Um, Masataka Yoshida is a player I really enjoy watching for them. Uh, but yeah, 5-2 and two on the year. They split with Seattle and then obviously swept the A's. Uh, and also just the kind of thing for the Red Sox here, the AL East is the best division in baseball. It's just too tough. Um, so, I mean, while the Red Sox are going to come in last in the AL East, it's not, it's not you know, any really fault of their own. I think they are finally starting to kind of take a direction here. You know, they were kind of content just being middle ground, like not very good these past few years, but like didn't really want to rebuild, didn't really want to like take steps to get better. They just kind of sat in mediocrity, which for a franchise like the Red Sox, really not acceptable. But I think they're finally, finally moving on. Then the Angels. The Angels won't come in last place in the West. The West is just as difficult as the East, just about. Um, they won't come in last place because of the A's, but the Angels, it's a new era. 4-2 and two so far here on the season. No more Shohei Otani. It's just Mike Trout. He's already hit three home runs this year. He's playing pretty well. 
Uh, so, yeah, the Angels went 1-2 and two versus Baltimore. And then actually swept the Marlins on the road here this second series. Nice 10-2 win on Wednesday. So, like I said, Mike Trout's playing really well. Taylor Ward uh, is a really solid left fielder for them. Logan O'Hoppy was a really good catcher last year. Not really good, but, you know, show, showed some promise uh, before he got injured. So, he's back and healthy. So, I'm excited to watch him. So, like I said, the Angels, similar to the Red Sox, just like, not really going to be in it just because of how tough their division is, but I think are going to finally start kind of moving in the right direction. They won't be the joke of, of MLB anymore like they've kind of been these past couple of years. Uh, then now moving on to these two AL Central teams. These two teams, while I do have them on the outside looking in, this, this, these two are why I uh, named it outside rather than next year. Because these two teams, I mean, they could theoretically challenge for the AL Central. I just don't think they will. Uh, first, the Guardians. Guardians are actually 5-2. and two. Uh, like I said, beat up, beat up on the A's, won, won three games in that series. But then actually won the series in Seattle here, uh, two two games to one. Um, so a good start for them on the road, being 5-2. and two. Jose Ramirez is just a heck of a player to watch. Um, Josh Naylor's a lot of fun. His brother Bo Naylor is going to be the catcher for the for the Guardians this year as well. Uh, they got solid pitching in Shane Bieber and Tanner Brady. But uh, I don't know. I just think it's kind of one of those teams, like two years ago they were in the playoffs. Last year took a step back. I, I think kind of maybe they'll be a little in between. Like maybe they kind of overperformed two years ago, underperformed last year. I think kind of maybe in between and could be, you know, challenging for the division, but I think they miss out. Uh, and then the Detroit Tigers, they're a team that's going to be fun. They're young, younger, kind of similar to like the the uh, Royals, but I think they're a little bit farther. And the Tigers are actually the last undefeated team here in baseball. They swept the White Sox to start their season and then won the first game of the set against the Mets. Uh, they play a doubleheader here on Thursday after they've been rained out the past two days. Uh, for them, I mean, Spencer Torkelson, hopefully he can have a breakout year. Colt Keith is a really fun prospect. That's He's going to play a lot this year. Riley Green's another solid player for them. So they have um, they have some, like, young guys that I think could be fun. And I, I have seen some people, like, on the outside, you know, maybe like a trendy pick, like be kind of high on the Tigers, be like, oh, could they, could they challenge for the division? I don't think, you know, that, that they're quite on that level. Oh, and also I forgot to mention, they did have some uh, key key um, kind of veteran leaders they added. Mark Canna, I like. He's a really solid hitter. Uh, Gio Rochelle is going to be playing third base for them. And then uh, pitching, you know, they added uh, Jack Flaherty and Ken Maeda, who are two kind of starters that have been around, around a little bit. So hopefully, you know, those guys can kind of kind of mentor these young guys. And like I said, maybe this year they challenge for it, but I, I think kind of maybe next year would be more their year. Then moving on to kind of some dark horses here, some teams that they could be make they're gonna be right on that playoff line. But you know if they get in the dance, they can make some noise. I mean the Rangers won the World Series last year's wild card. Last year's World Series was two wild card teams. Uh, so for my dark horses, the first we have Tampa Bay. Uh, they're three and four to start the year. They split with Toronto and then lost uh, two of three to Texas on on the week here. Uh, sadly for the Rays. Wander Franco is not going to be coming through that door anytime soon, but I think Jose Caballero could be a really solid shortstop for them. Uh, and the Rays just kind of always find a way to make do with nothing. You know, like they're they're almost like a modern day money ball where they just like they have really good scouting, really good analytics. They find players, they get the best out of players. I mean, guys like Isak Paredes, uh, Harold Ramirez, you know, Josh Lowe. They have they just have so many names where it's like really like do they. To the casual fan, you're kind of going to be like, who are these guys? Like, they don't really move the needle for you. But for someone who watches baseball, you know, on a pretty much daily basis or at least at least uh, follows it, uh, Yandy Diaz is another name. Uh, Brandon Lau is another one. Um, like, guys that kind of, like, if you watch the Rays, like, I'm, an, I'm a Yankees fan, so I watch them in the AL East. Like, you you know these names, but if, if you don't, like, follow the Rays or follow the AL East, you're not going to. But they just kind of always find a way to make it work. I am a little little kind of down on their pitching. Uh, they don't have as much depth and had some injuries. Also, oh my gosh, how did I not mention uh, mention Randy Rosarin? He is the one-star player for them. Like I said, Wander Franco, I think, could have been on that level, but he's not going to be playing anytime soon after kind of some of his off-field issues. But Randy Rosarina is that fun player to watch. He is that star for the Rays, and we'll have to see if he can lead them back to the postseason after, you know, they got in last year as a wild card with the number four seed, but lost both of those games to Texas. Then another team led by a star outfielder, Jose Ramirez, leads the Seattle Mariners. They are current 
Lee, sorry. Mariners are three and four on the year as well. So not a great start for them. A lot of these teams kind of in this tier, not not the best starts. Uh, Mariners three and four, like I said, split against Boston at home and then lost two or three to the Guardians. So Jose Ramirez is kind of the leader, or not, sorry. Yes, Jose Ramirez. No, 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 no. Julio Rodriguez, I'm so sorry, to, wrong JR, is the leader for the Mariners. They also uh, added some nice guys. They brought back Mitch Hanniger, um, Mitch Mitch Garver signed Jose Jose Polan or Jorge Polanco. I'm sorry, I'm I'm just tripping up on these Mariners names. I'm all over the place. Uh, their team, they were like in it last year, like they were leading the division a lot of the way. But just how good the Astros and the Rangers were, and kind of how they finished, they found the Mariners found themselves on the outside looking in. But I think maybe this year, you know, they sneak back into the playoffs. They were in it two years ago. It was their first time since 2001 making the playoffs. Can they finally take that step that people thought they were going to take last year? Can they take it this year? I personally think they can. I think I have them as my sixth playoff team. Like I said, it's really hard for me to count out Tampa Bay since they just always every year seem to be in it. But for me, I'm going to go with the Mariners as my sixth wild card or my third wild card team, sixth in the American League. Then moving on to the Twins, the one team that probably actually did get off to a good start in this group, the only like over 500 one. They are who I think wins the AL Central this year. They're currently three and two, uh, winning two of three against Kansas City, and then splitting in Milwaukee here these these two games uh, that this week. Um, bad injury. Roy, Royce Lewis was supposed to be the star player for the uh, Twins this year, and he suffered injuries. Probably gonna be out two months. Byron Buxton's another. You know he's always been there, really solid player for the Twins, but. He has his injury history, so hopefully he can stay healthy this year. And, I mean, just this Twins team, I just think they're kind of better than any other team. Eduardo Julian's a really solid player. Carlos Correa, star player for them as well. Really good signing a couple years ago. Um, Their team, if they can stay healthy, which, like I said, they're already having kind of some of these injury problems. Pablo Lopez, their ace, is a really solid starter. I just think they have the best roster in the AL Central. They won it last year. Uh, really cool ballpark there in Minnesota. Tough place to play. So I'm going with the Twins to win that division. And then the final kind of dark horse team, I have them, like I said, outside looking into the playoffs here. Uh, but the Toronto Blue Jays, they are also 3-4, and four, like I said, split with the Rays. And then we're man- able to squeak out one against Houston on, on a, that was Tuesday. Davis Schneider hit a two-run homer in the ninth to escape going from you know, they got no hit on Monday. Crazy that we already had a no hitter this year. No hit on Monday. We had nothing going Tuesday until that home run. Are able to save the game. But just for me, the Blue Jays are just this team that everyone, I feel like, always hypes up. Like, yeah, they have Vlad Guerrero, MLB, you know, the show cover athlete. Um, Bo Bichette is a really solid player. But, like, they're this team. Like, they had the quote, like, oh, it was only the trailer. Just wait till the movie. And I don't really ever see it. They got swept in the wild card round last year. I just really don't think they're that good. They didn't do that much. Really, their only addition the offseason was Justin Turner, who's, like, aging. And it's just going to be a DH for them. So, I think the Blue Jays, while they are, you know, ahead of, like, a Red Sox, I think they, they finished fourth fourth in the AL Central. So, or AL East. So, that's who I'm going with. And then, finally, my contenders tier here. If I can pull it up, I'm sorry I keep keep doing the wrong things. There it is, my contenders. I have the Baltimore Baltimore Orioles, your defending World Series champion, the Texas Rangers, the champions from two years ago, the Houston Astros, and then the homer pick of mine, the New York Yankees. So we're going to go in order. We'll go in order here. So the Ro- Orioles, we start 4-2. and two. They win the first two against the Angels pretty handily, drop the third one. Uh, they struggled a little bit with Kansas City, came back to win today, two out hitting the ninth to win it. Uh, they're one of the most fun teams in baseball. I'm glad to see now that they're finally good. They adding they add Corbin Burns in the offseason. Top five pitcher in all of baseball. Like that's after a great season. I love to see new ownership come in, spend the money, make a trade there for a guy like Corbin Burns. He's a really solid starter. Adley Rutschman, I could assert himself as the best catcher in all of baseball this year. I mean, Jackson Holiday's coming here in the p- pipeline was the number one prospect. They also, you know. Young guys like Gunnar Henderson, that's really, really solid. Um, Cedric Mullins is a lot of fun to watch in the outfield, as well as Anthony Santander. Uh, they're just like a team that I think they're deep. I really kind of like them all around. Uh, Craig, Craig Kimbrell could be a solid reliever. I like that addition. If um, I forget if Bautista, Felix Bautista is coming back this year. Probably not. Uh, I can't remember what his injury was exactly. But they're just a team, they're 
all around really well versed. I do want to overreact a little bit and say I want to pick the Yankees to win the East after this first weekend, but I'm going to stick with my pick. Before the season, my pick was the Orioles. I'm going with the Orioles. Then the one division winner I do have changing. Usually, no, it's like it's three to four of the division winners kind of are the same every year. In out of the six, I'm going to go with two of the three being the same here in the American League and the Orioles and the Twins. But I'm going to go with the Rangers. Maybe it's kind of a cop out answer. And soon, like I said, they're defending World Series champions. They're four and two, going two and one in both series against the Cubs and Tampa Bay. At really, really good performance here against the Rays on the road. I mean, they just have so. The Rangers are another team. Fun young guys, but also have just some superstars and guys like Trevor, um, sorry, Marcus Simeon, Corey Seager, Adelise Garcia had an insane postseason last year, if you can keep that up again. But then, you know, also young guys like Josh Young, Evan Carter, Wyatt Langford gets the call this year, their draft pick. I think they're a team, you know, they can go deep. Like I said, they have some pitching, pitching injuries with guys like Scherzer, DeGrom, uh, Michael Lorenzen, who they, who they added in the offseason. But I mean, Nathan Navaldi's like had a really he's been really prolific for them lately. He's pitching really well. Andrew Heaney, you know, kind of also had a resurgence. He struggled with the Yankees a couple years ago, but with Texas here, he's been pitching well. You know, they have some some solid relievers. That was a bit of their uh, Achilles heel late in the season last year. But if Jose Leclerc can have a, have a good season, I think you know they're they're again another team that's just all overall really well rounded, and I think I think should be the favorites to win the West. Then the team. These two teams actually play this weekend. Should be a fun series. The division rivals, their in-state rivals, who they beat in the ALCS last year. The Houston Astros are who I think is going to be number one wild card. Have them as the four four seed, so they would host the host a game in the wild card, and then would have to head to Minnesota if they had win. Um, just like last year, however, or well, last year uh, Houston had home home field advantage in that series, but this year I'm I'm predicting it would be Minnesota. Uh, the Astros here to start. They are two and five. Not a great start because they got swept at home by the New York Yankees. The New York Yankees are my last contender that I have. Sorry, I just kind of glossed over the Astros there. I'll come back to them. The Yankees are six and one. They made the biggest splash outside of maybe Corbin Burns, the biggest for sure pitch or hitting splash in the offseason in the American League, adding Juan Soto, and he's been great already. He threw out he threw out the tying run in game one of that Astros series. Uh, he had a solid game two. He hit a home run that put him ahead in game three, and he had the go-ahead hit in game four. Juan Soto and Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge didn't have a great start to the season until he hit a home run today. Uh, two and one against the Diamondbacks they went this year because of Judge's home run, and then he also had the game-winning RBI in extra innings. So six and one, first place in the American League sent or American League in whole. Um I said I want to be biased and pick them to win the East, but I'm going to stick with my preseason pick, the Orioles. I think the Yankees for sure are a wild card, though. I do have them, however, behind the Astros. They would have home, f- or if them and the Astros finish tied, they've already won the season series with Houston because of that four-game sweep. But the Astros are who I have as my fourth fourth place t- team in the American League. Go back to them. Uh, shout out to Ron L. Blanco, like I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the Blue Jays. Blanco threw a no-hitter already. The Astros have thrown four of the last seven no-hitters that have happened in Major League Baseball. Four. That's insane. Uh, and like I said, Ronald Blanco, earliest no-hitter to ever happen in postseason history. Or, I'm sorry, MLB regular season history. Um, the Astros added the best reliever of any team in the American League. They added Josh Hader. However, he's kind of struggled a little bit here. But, I mean, they bring back pretty much the same team. You know, it's the same infield of Altuve, Pena, Bregman, Jose Abreu. Yiner Diaz is now going to be the catcher because Martin Maldonado left for Chicago. And Yiner Diaz is a better hitting catcher, in my opinion, so that's, that's not a bad bad addition. Jordan Alvarez is still there, you know, play DH and play left field. So they're, they're still the same Astros. I mean, they've made, what, seven straight ALCSs. I would not be surprised if it's eight straight after this year. Uh, but I do think the Rangers are a better team. So I'm going with the Orioles and the Rangers, my top two seeds get buys. I'm going then uh, the Twins win the Central. Then the Astros would be the number one wild card. They'd host the Yankees in the wild card game. Then I'm going to go the Mariners are the last team to get in. So those are my six teams. If I had to lean, obviously the Rangers, the Orioles would be the safe pick. But like I said, last year the Rangers won as a wild card, two wild cards in the World Series. 
going to be a homer. Could the New York Yankees finally put it together? I really think everything that could go wrong for the Yankees last year went wrong. I think that bounce back this year, that addition of Juan Soto makes their offense so much better. I'm going to go with the New York Yankees as my pick to win the American League. So that is going to wrap up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop your picks down in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, like I said, make sure to subscribe. Hit like on the video. If you're just listening on Spotify, make sure to rate the show five stars. There's going to be so much more baseball content coming here, especially once, once the NCAA tournament ends. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.